Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Carrie Berry. Today I'm going to be um, kind of reviewing Dress Codes by Richard Thompson Ford. It's a brand new book and I'm very excited to check it out and uh, read a little bit by Fireside today. If you'd like to join me, that would be really great. It's a super cold day, so I lit a fire as soon as I woke up this morning. And um, yeah, it's just one of those days where I want to snuggle up and enjoy a good read. Good morning, you guys. Um, I am starting my day with a fire because it is super nasty outside. Very, very rainy and cold. So um, I'm very grateful that I woke up and realized that I had a box at the door and I have this brand new book. It's very exciting actually. Here, let me show you the cover of it. It's Dress Codes, How the, layers, how the Laws of fashion, fashion Made History, Richard Thompson Ford. So it's very interesting because I just so happen to be browsing books on Amazon when I came across that particular book and apparently the book just came out. So it's pretty interesting. One of the first photos I saw in here. Oh, this is one of my favorite paintings of all time. I love Dido. Oh God, I love Dido. Okay, anyway. <laughs> yes, but there's a picture in here of our former president. And it is quite interesting, for sure. This Donald Trump flouts the norms of good taste with a poorly tied necktie kept in place with scotch tape. I'm not, I'm not going to show you the picture because this is a brand new book and if you guys want to see it, you're going to have to buy the book. That's just how that goes. But I am going to be reading a bit of this by Fireside with my coffee and after I do, I will pop back on and let you know my first impressions. Here's just a look at why you guys should pick up a Purnapple from my Etsy shop. I mean, shameless plug, but... Yeah. I can't force her to do that. That's just what she wants to do. Okay? She's just loving on that Purnapple. Mm-hmm. Do you love it? <laughs> oh, sweetie. So they don't really look quite like that. That's the mock-up that she's had for a while. And that's kind of testament to how well they last because that's the mock-up. The ones that I'm making for sale are stitched a lot better. Oh, baby. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm having a really great time reading this book so far. So, yeah. The book starts off with a very interesting accounting of the one John Hetherington, a haberdasher of the Strand, who was arraigned and charged for basically inciting a riot for wearing a particular hat. Uh, the hat was described as, where is it, uh, saying that it was basically made to scare people, calculated to frighten, which I find very interesting indeed. Um, and that wasn't an unprecedented accounting in history either, where people were actually charged for crimes for wearing a particular garment, so to speak. And um, yeah, it uh, goes on to with the author having a little bit of an interview with the creative director of Marie Claire magazine, which I used to read as a teen. Um, she says uh, that she herself, as a self-prescribed punk rock girl, uh, follows a code that the patches you put on a denim, and ja denim jacket or the pins and the band t-shirt you're wearing are definitely a signal to other people around you that you are a part of that tribe. And I've always said that myself. Um, definitely a very interesting read just into the introduction. And if I'd like to... Um, give you a bit of an excerpt from the introduction as my favorite part so far. I'll do that now. 
Why is attire so rule-bound? Why and when is clothing important enough to become the subject of treatises, rules and regulations, legislative proclamations and judicial edicts? When, what happens and what should happen when those rules come into conflict with changing social norms about equality and personal freedom? When do dress codes serve useful purposes? And when are they needlessly reprehensive or unjust? What does it mean to dress for success or to flout the rules in the interest of self-expression? Is our choice of attire ever really personal? Or do we always dress to impress or provoke other people? Are rules about clothing less important in the era of telecommunity and online dating or have less frequent face-to-face -face interactions become all the more loaded with meaning? Dress codes will answer these questions and so many others, exploring the laws of fashion throughout history to uncover the personal, social, and political significance of clothing, our most intimate and most public medium of self-expression. So, needless to say, having only read the introduction, I'm fully engrossed in this book and I'm ready to dive in completely and give it my full attention. Oh gosh, okay, okay, ah! No, I don't, I don't take, here. <laughs> oh, I do love reading on rainy days. Hearing the sounds of thunder outside.